So data is information collected and analyzed in an organized way. Any information can be data, but not all information is data. So what does this mean? So for instance, let's say I have all my plants behind me and I'm trying to figure out the optimal amount of sunlight for them. So I have vague ideas in my head. Uh, the sun comes in sometime in the morning. It's October. Uh, yeah, this one seems to like, like a little bit more light. And that one, I don't know, it seems a little unhappy when it gets to it. That's information. I have ideas. I have a bit of uh, information about the light in this room and the plants and what they seem to prefer, but I don't have data. It, it's not organized. I'm not saying October 6th of every single year, the sun rises at this time and it starts to filter in because of the leaf foliage level outside to such and such a degree, that's data. Once I've organized it and I can create something out of it. Um, now data isn't information in the sense of being a chart or a graph, that's data organized into infographics and in, into results. Um, so data is also a raw material, a bit like cocoa is a raw material out of which you make chocolate. There's, there's work that needs to be done to the raw material in order to make the result that you want. So uh, uh, when you think about, okay, I want data about these plants, about children and child welfare, about uh, my research area, which is conservatism, you have to think, where am I gonna get data? How am I gonna get it? How am I gonna organize it? Um, so where are you gonna get data? What data you'll collect? How you plan to analyze it? These are questions you wanna think about. You don't have to have final answers, but you wanna think about this right at the beginning. Um, so I wanna think about, all right, October 6th every year, write down the sunset time, see, see where the sunlight comes in, see which plants wilt and which plants grow by a centimeter. Um, so yeah, so you, you really gotta think like what you wanna collect and what you're trying to learn. And then, um, so I have my chart of sun times and plant growth. So what do I need to do to this to understand which plants need what? So I need to see, how much is each plant growing or is it wilting? Um, I need to see when the sunlight is coming in, things like that. Um, so then you analyze the data and examine your results. Um, and keep in mind, of course, this notion of data, very linked to the notion of facts, um, means a lot in this positivist frame. Uh, it's, it's very uh, objective. There's this idea of objective knowledge. Um, all right, next slide here. Qualitative and quantitative data. We've talked about this to some degree, but yeah, qualitative data is words or something that can be treated as words. Images, you can say it's red. Uh, you can give a uh, color value to things. Um, that's qualitative data. And quantitative data is numbers. Children and child welfare, uh, how happy are they from zero to 10? Um, how, how well are they doing in school? from one to four, these are quantitative data. Um, how much did Stephen Harper spend on the justice system in 2013? That's quantitative data. So uh, you can use either qualitative or quantitative to talk about the real world. And when you use both, that's often called mixed methods. Uh, you're combining qualitative and quantitative approaches to the same thing. So um, for instance, um, I had a research idea of studying conservatism in Ghana. I wanted to look at the World Values Survey to see what people that identify as more on the right in certain parts of the world, what's their feeling on the acceptability of abortion? How does that compare to people in Canada? Um, but at the same time, I wanted to do a case study of, of the party system there to see you know, what kind of things conservative, the conservative party is talking about. So that's an example of like a mixed method. I'm using multiple methods to try to get at the same thing. What's conservatism in another country? Um, 